Good morning, my friends. How are you? In the house is Carrie Abernathy in the studio, fourth vice president of uh, the Director of Region 9 National Federation of Women. And on the phone, Penny Payne. Penny is president of the Mississippi Federation of Republican Women. Carrie, good morning to you. First of all, how are you? I'm great, Paul. How about you? Good. Penny, can you hear me? Everything okay, loud and clear? I, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, do you folks offer therapy for some members too when they get deep in this? When you just just after watching this stuff, and I guess the words are that we could all understand is is we're at wits end that some adults are not in the room in the Democrat Party. Carrie, absolutely. That kind of after the debate, we had a a long text of um, or a long chain of of text and and telephone calls and. What I try to tell my ladies is we all get so infuriated at the mm -hmm. lies uh, that we just try to channel that into the work that's ahead. That's yeah. how we keep <laughs> saying is to say, okay, we know that we're not getting a fair shake on this. So what we need to do is, is really get out and hit the streets and start working harder. And turn that anger into a ground level uh, results on one way or the other. Penny, your thoughts? Absolutely. I completely agree. And it has done just that. Our ladies are excited. They're more determined than ever to get Trump back in the White House. Mm -hmm. They're worried about crime, the border, the economy, all these things that um, Kamala just seems to um, never give us a direct answer on. Government health care, fracking, gun confiscation, all those things that she keeps going back and forth on. These ladies are tired of the cover-ups. They're tired of the lies. The Biden lies are just continuing through this administration. And they're just determined to get Trump reelected. For those of us who've been in politics for a long time, and certainly of the baby boomer age, and I'm not putting thoughts in other people's minds, but it's almost to me like if you were uh, there about an hour before the Titanic hit, and you can see everybody taking this nonchalantly, somebody saying, look, we need to be watching out for this. There's a possibility. Everybody disregards them. And you see, at that moment, history is going to be made that's not going to be very good history in about an hour uh, before, they hit the, before they hit the iceberg. That's the feeling I get as far as America itself. We've overlived everybody's expectations, certainly world history, to have this democracy, this form of democracy. So do you kind of get that feeling when we everybody says this and we've kind of used it up over the years that this is the most important election? But, Carrie, I don't think there's any doubt about this one. Not a doubt at all. When, when I talk to the ladies, we are 100% um, in agreement that this is a very consequential election. Mm -hmm. And going back to the debate, goodness <laughs> gracious, we could talk about several topics that were mentioned, but for there were two that really stood out to me in both our foreign policy issues. You don't have to be a foreign policy wonk right. to recognize that this lady, our sitting vice president, is not a peacemaker. Um, two topics in particular. One is her comments as it relates to Israel. Penny and I were guests of the Israeli embassy back in the spring and had a unique opportunity to meet at that time one of the released hostages as well as families of the hostages. And... Um, the events that happened in October to Israel were unimaginable. And for this, our sitting vice president, president to say that she supports a two-state solution. And let me just kind of lay that out for you. What she would be doing is yeah. giving Hamas a state because Hamas is in control of Gaza. And it's really alarming. It's really alarming for the comments that she said in that regard. Yeah. Additionally, she bragged about meeting with Zelensky five times, and not one time, Paul, did she mention a peace plan. So that tells me that she is for war, death, destruction, and more of our tax dollars going to that war with no end plan in sight. This lady is not a peacemaker. We, we, we have found ourselves being in a weird situation. I don't even know how it happened. You're talking about an historic figure in American history, Donald Trump. We've changed from, uh, we've changed from hawk to dove, and and the Democrat Party now is the, are the warmongers. And 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 the other thing that people don't understand, while Merrick Garland's talking about, man, we've got to rise in white terrorist white groups uh, that we need to watch out for. 
you've got all of these people on college campuses fomenting, fomenting uh, hatred against Jewish people and siding with uh, Hamas. And Absolutely. it's just weird. It is. But, you know, I just often wonder, do these people really know what they're doing? No. Are they just being paid no. to go there and just camp out on these campuses and put up flags and... Then when they tell them it's time to go home, they pack it up and go or just leave it there for other people to clean up. It's the ignorance of our society that has just struck me. They're just not looking at the facts, and we've got to make that a better – we've got to do a better job of informing these voters so that they know exactly what's at stake. To the to the powers that be for decades and decades who said that they will tear America down from the inside, they're counting on that ignorance. I'm not sure if i got enough time to do this one, but I want to kind of, let's see if we can squeeze this one in to give you an idea for people who may have missed it. Understand, in his Project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor. What she says is an absolute lie. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby when it's born. Nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mothers. Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. It was a different term, and it was a term that related to energy. We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Let's remember Charlottesville. There were fine people on each side. Very fine people on both sides. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. Let us finally pass an assault weapons ban and universal background checks and red flag laws. That's probably why your phone rang a lot after the debate, uh, Carrie. Absolutely. Look, there were millions of people that watched that debate, and um, millions of those were independents. Mm-hmm. I believe that there was close to 16 million people who watched the debate this time that didn't watch it the first time. Um, the ABC debate moderators proved to millions of voters that the media is against Trump. We've been illustrating that point since day one, but I believe that it was on full display. Those moderators missed probably about two dozen times that they could have fact-checked the vice president, and they chose not to. Um, so for me, this further illustrates our issue that the media is against Trump 100 sure. percent. Penny, I, I saw something yesterday. I haven't seen a lot today, so it may not have enough. It, it may not be substantiated enough. But there was a, a tweet yesterday from a rather reputable source that said there was a whistleblower uh, ready to, he'd signed in a, a, a statement that uh, he has proof she knew what the questions are going to be. She was assured that she would have no uh, uh, checks and balances. They would not come back and ask her for anything. She could say whatever the hell she wanted to. So we'll see where that goes. But I think we already know that. But it would good if we had a legal statement on that. It would certainly be good from a, a whistleblower. But do you think we're going to be able to stop through some manner? Um, the illegals voting in this country, certainly in those key precincts uh, in the uh, in the blue states. You know, that's a great question. I hope that we will have enough Republicans mm-hmm. there that can watch the polls and and be trained in poll watching and make a presence there to stop some of this. These mail in ballots are, you know, are dangerous and allowing illegals to vote is going to be the detriment of our country. I just hope that we have enough Republicans in those key battleground states to help with that election integrity because we are really going to, I'm sure, see an influx of these yeah. votes. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. Can you ladies hold on for a second? Got a couple of other things. 
We'll mention this, that there's word from the post office. What timing on this one? I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it is. It's, it, it, first of all, when you see it, you say, okay, here it comes. They're getting ready. Uh, a message from the post office that is coming up next. On and about yesterday, driving around Springfield, I was looking at the giant holes in some of our buildings. I noticed all of the old familiar spots bearing new signs in an unfamiliar language. I watched as groups of strangers walked around the city like lost tourists, and it was like a punch in the gut. A terrible sadness came over me, and I began to cry. I immediately started to think back to when I was little, walking from my grandma's house on South Fountain through downtown and all the way to Snyder Park going to Wren's to get new school clothes and shoes, dropping pennies in the fountain and making wishes. And now, all those warm memories are becoming fuel to the fire of anger inside of me. I'm angry that my friends and family are packing up and moving away. I'm angry that foreigners are using up the resources that were set up for the Americans that reside here. I'm angry that another country's flag was being flown in our city. I'm angry when I see our businesses and recreational areas littered with garbage left by people that do not know or understand our laws and culture and are making no attempt to learn about them. And let me be clear, this is not about race. This is about people being given the privilege of coming here from another country and having no respect for our people, our land, or our life's work. People living their life here the way they did in Haiti, angry, stealing, polluting, living in filth and acting like animals, opening containers in our grocery stores, helping themselves to what's inside and throwing the rest onto the shelves and floors, pulling off of the highway to publicly clean and gut the roadkill, lying there in front of anyone that passes by, stealing animals from farmers and leaving their severed heads at the side of an old school where children play, relieving themselves in public, making some barbaric stew out of the birds that live in our park. This is insanity. And, and it, it, it went on uh, there. I don't want to take a lot of time away. But this lady was at her wit's end, uh, and it's going on in a lot of locations across the entire country. We've, ladies, uh, again, Carrie Abernathy is uh, fourth vice president, and she's also director of Region 9 National Federation of Republican Women. Penny Payne is on the phone. She's the president, Mississippi Federation of Republican Women. We, we've been very fortunate that, that our leaders in the state of Mississippi have stopped most of this. Carrie? Absolutely. And Paul, if I could just share with your listeners now, mm -hmm. uh, we, we're, we're coming off this debate. It's really time to get to work. And I know that Trump has said that there will not be a next debate. So really, it's time, yeah. which we've been rolling up our slates for quite some time. And I know Penny can talk to the activities uh, in Mississippi, but... Uh, the National Federation of Republican Women will begin uh, at the end of this month launching what we call a strike force. And that's where our members from across the nation go out. We knock door to door. We educate the voters. We make calls. We, um, we do numerous things. We will be in all of the, bat the battleground states. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on different states, we have different things that's going on. So I know that you mentioned one thing about uh, delays in the post office, but uh, specifically in North Carolina, our ladies are doing a letter writing campaign through the group My Faith Votes. Now, so many of our, our ladies, we're partnering with other organizations. We see that this election is so consequential, consequential that uh, it's going to take us all working together. Yeah. Um, we partner with young Republicans, uh, but specifically about my faith votes. One in three Christians don't vote, which is really sad. That's about 25 million in the U.S. So this group identifies Christians who are pro-life and pro-traditional family, and we reach out to them. Um, in addition to that, we're reaching out to hunters, uh, specifically in Pennsylvania. It's probably hard for a Missy. Mississippi hunter to realize this, but there are 30 hunters, uh, excuse me, 30 percent of hunters in Pennsylvania that are not registered to vote. Yes. In Wisconsin, there's 40 percent of hunters that are not registered to vote. That, that is absolutely, that that's unforgivable, <laughs> uh, especially right now. It's, I hope some people are working on that in those two states. Well, we are. And um, again, it's going to take everybody working together. Yeah. But, and look, this didn't just happen. We've been working on this for the past four years. So 
let me let me just take for example some things that we've been doing in Pennsylvania, and and we know that it's going to come down to these swing states. Mississippi mm-hmm. is going to go for Trump, 100 percent. We know that there's these swing states that is really going to, um, ha- you know, make the difference. So I want to share with you, for example, in uh, Luzerne County, uh, Pennsylvania, in June of 2020, we had um, in 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 those states they they register by by party. Um, uh, 20, over 24,000, um, there were more Democrats registered to vote. Two weeks ago, that number was down to 612. So wow. we're 340 votes away from flipping Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. So right now, we're having this massive register voters. That is what our key is. And as soon as those deadlines hit where you can't register anymore, we're going to immediately flip the switch and we're going to work on uh, the get the vote out effort. Uh, Those folks that are not going to be in town that can absentee, we're going to do that. So that's just one county in Pennsylvania. And I know for years we've heard about Bucks County, a very, a very similar uh, thing. In June of 2020, Democrats had an advantage of over 15,000. September of this year, Republicans have closed that gap, and we now have a uh, over 1,000 advantage. So we are really making strides, but it's going to take everybody listening to my voice mm-hmm. to get activated and get to work. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just, go ahead. Go, I just want to ask either one. Do we, do we have Mississippians who are actually on the ground in those states? Well, I think I think Penny can, can speak to Penny? that. Yes, absolutely. We have been requesting volunteers for months, and uh, several ladies from Mississippi have signed up to actually go to these battleground states and Mm -hmm. boots on the ground, knocking on doors. We also have ladies that can't travel but have signed up to make phone calls for those battleground states. So we are definitely, um, we realize that this is an important election, and, and, you know, Mississippi is a red state, but we are not taking anything for granted Um, Everyone has to be involved. Like Carrie said, this is not the election to sit out. We have to be engaged. And and the ladies of Mississippi know that and realize that we have to not only work in Mississippi, but we have to share those efforts with those battleground states. Um, I'm sure you need more if uh, they are available. Absolutely. We are still accepting volunteers if anyone is interested. And even for your listeners that that may not um, be able to make phone calls or work in the battleground state, they can certainly do some grassroots effort. Um, they can text. We we're asking text 50 people as of your family and friends. Yep. And then ask them to text 50 people. If 50 people are texting 50 other people, that's 25 people right there you're reminding to vote, asking them if they're registered to vote. Set up a booth outside your church. Register people there. We have TARS groups in Mississippi that are setting up tables outside, you know, 200 feet away from the courthouses and registering people to vote. These young people, even though they may not be old enough to vote, they're excited and they realize the importance of getting out to vote and getting these people registered. It's their right, it's their privilege. And it's um, certainly something we want to make sure that every Mississippian is registered and and will be at the poll and not only just to vote we have to have them vote that entire uh ticket you can't just stop at the president you got to vote all the way to the bottom we've got some very important judicial elections on the ballot our second district election is very important we just have to make sure that people are voting all the way to the bottom of the ballot because all elections are important either of you ladies have any idea what we are as a source of percentage of um uh, unregistered voters in the state who are hold a, a hunting license or a fishing license. You know, I don't, I don't know that number, Paul, but I can tell yeah. you. Uh, I think for Mississippi, being a red state, we're very much ingrained in the thought of gun confiscations being taken away their right mm-hmm. to uh, to have and bear arms is very frightening, and uh, I, I, I think it's enough that will push those voters to go out and vote. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> Excuse me, I hope so, but I, I worry about some of those coming out of college and, and uh, you know, they've grown up hunting and fishing, but they haven't registered yet, and if they're going to do it, this election is one that they've got to this do. This business about taking everyone's guns away, we're not taking anybody's guns away, so stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. We need an assault weapon. 
weapons ban. Let us finally pass an assault weapons ban. We need an assault weapons ban. I do believe that we need to do buyback. I'm prepared to take executive action and put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. Stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. And together, when we win in November, we are finally going to pass universal background checks. Let's We're not taking anybody's guns away. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. Um, I support buybacks. How mandatory is your gun buyback program? It's mandatory. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. Wow. Mm. Let's take her at her word. <laughs> she, right. She, well, it, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I'll give you final thoughts. When we we, we got a, a quick break here. Final thoughts coming up next. Eighth. We go back with the ladies. I haven't forgotten this uh, story as far as the post office is concerned. Basically, what it says is the post office is complaining they do not have enough money, you haven't funded them enough, and state and local officials are now saying that they've been warned that problems with the nation's mail delivery system threatens to disenfranchise voters in the upcoming presidential election. In an alarming letter, the official said that over the past year, uh, because you didn't uh, give us enough money, period, that some of the ballots might not be there in time to um, to count. We also heard, and I don't know if you ladies have heard this, that some people at the post office or at at the at the circuit court's office or wherever it is are putting a little check mark up in one of the corners on the envelope if it happens to be a Republican. And they might just accidentally lose those in the transition of mailing from point A to point B. I just, I just, now I don't know if that's true, but to me with this, uh, with this uh, party, it is plausible. Carrie, I'm going to give you the final thoughts. Um, well, we're closing very fast into the election. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage people that while Penny and I, we're, we're at this every day, what seems like all day long, anyone can do what they can to make sure that there's a good turnout in November. Uh, Penny mentioned this uh, texting, reminding those that you go to church yeah. with. Um, if you know, you, you know, the nature of your job, you're going to be out of town, absentee. Um, every opportunity that we have to get people to the polls, we need to take it. Offer rides, whatever it is, um, everyone can play a part. Everyone can do a small job so that we have big returns in November. I did mention this the other day, and I want to correct myself because we said something about the absentee voting. Uh, absentee voting opens uh, at all circuit clerk's office in Mississippi no later than September 23rd. I was a little ahead on that one. September 23rd, ahead of the November 5th election. In-person absentee voting deadline is November the 2nd. Uh, any follow-ups on that, uh, Penny, or your final thoughts? We just have to keep working. We cannot stop. This is definitely the, the election to win. Um, be engaged in this, and if you want more information about um, joining our efforts, if you're listeners, um, go to MississippiFRW.org. We are in it to win it, so you can find your local club, and we would love to have any volunteers, or if you're just wanting more information on the election, yeah. certainly visit our website. And if ladies uh, decide, hey, you know, this is something I think I'd like to do and get involved and want to travel to oh, any of the states there, they're not going to be just thrown out on their own. They will have a group of uh, like-minded people there when they get there. Absolutely. Um, you know, even even when we go into areas like this, going mm -hmm. into the area, knowing knowing the, the lingo, the slang or whatever, um, you know, if I can go and make calls in Michigan from Mississippi, you can definitely <laughs> do it. And, and um, well, I'm all sure of my is. experience has been yeah. positive, so... You will get the attention with a southern accent. They're going to certainly be listening to you there. Yes. A, couple, a couple of other things here that are just a, a toss it out real quick. Trump did mention yesterday, no tax. One of the other things that he wants to do on his agenda that is far from the 2025 project, project 20, 2025. But uh, one of the other things is he wants to implement no taxes on overtime pay. 
So you put that with the Social Security and the tips, and uh, it's it's basically from a financial state of mind or a, a, a private sector guy. We're wasting the hell out of money out there. Let's give some of that money back to the people and stop charging all of these taxes. And uh, I think it's a good idea. The second point is the Internet, in the last couple of days or since the um, since the debate, there are a plethora of people from Haiti that have been here since, well, for a long time, legally. And they're all verifying that, yes, it is a practice there in their voodoo religion in Haiti to eat animals, sacrifice and eat. So that's not what you heard on ABC, of course, and that's not what you heard on The View. But... Um, and they've kind of they've kind of turned that into just a a comical routine, but uh, it is a truism apparently in uh, in Haiti, a very very poor country. Ladies, I thank you and hats off from everybody listening to this, and certainly me and and Lance. Hats off to your work, and uh, I know we're doing everything we possibly can. Thank Carrie, you very much for having us. Thank you, Kerry Abernathy and Penny Payne. We got news and an update from Fox and Super Talk News. Coming up next. <laughs> 